welcome to this new video for my channel, The Mental Traveler. I'm Caro Herrera and today I'm going to be reviewing the newest adaptation of my ninth favorite book, Vanity Fair, a novel without a hero. This version came out in 2018 and was produced by ITV. It had seven episodes and it starts Olivia Colman, Tom Bateman, Johnny Flynn, Claudia Jesse, Michael Palin, Robert Poch, Francis Ella Tour, Simon Russell Beale, among others. When I learned they were making a new adaptation of Vanity Fair, I was really excited because usually they just keep remaking the same stories all over and over again. Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, Great Expectations. So it's nice when they make a new movie or series about another really cool English classic that's not as well known because now more audiences will be aware of this fantastic plot. And while I am an Anglophile and a lover of British actors, many of the main cast of this new version were known to me. So I was intrigued to see this version with new faces train beloved characters and this will be a spoiler free video so sit back and enjoy Set in the early 19th century in England, it tells the story of two young school friends, Becky Sharp and Amelia Sedley. Becky is of a poor background and is a governess. She's pretty, clever and a social climber. Amelia, meanwhile, is middle class. She is pretty but naive and innocent. The story follows them as they go their separate ways, meeting at different points, and we get to see them interacting a lot with the men of their lives. We see them achieving certain dreams and having some of their hopes crushed. We see them flirting as young girls, being wives of military men during the famous Waterloo battle. We see them becoming mothers and so on. Vanity Fair is a story about longing for things that are not really worth having and how once you get them you realize they're hollow despite the fact that they may or may not have looked promising before. Since the very start I have always preferred Becky over Amelia not only as a fellow woman but as a literary creation. As to the men I have always absolutely loved William Dobbin and Rodden Crawley. I don't want to tell you any more about the story except that it's also a study of the different social classes in England at this time in history and yet in a way it's a universal timeless study because because human beings will always be human beings, no matter the year, country, or social class. I give this version of Vanity Fair a 4 out of 5 stars review, and while I do recommend it to anyone who likes period dramas or this fantastic story or English classics, I feel I'm being a bit nice to it with my reigning. Sure, it's a very nice production with gorgeous cinematography, lovely costumes, and nice acting. I do like when period dramas have modern music, like this one did, and one of the things that I really liked about this adaptation was that it had, at the start of each episode, the famous actor Michael Palin portraying William Makepeace Thackeray, the author of Vanity Fair and he appeared at the start as if he was about to tell us his story and I like this for three things because I read somewhere that Vanity Fair is Michael Palin's favorite book also because no other adaptation had done this before but mostly though it's because it fits with the structure of the book seeing as the novel starts as if there was this puppeteer inviting people to his show at a fair and throughout the novel he often interrupts the plot to address the audience directly but yeah I also like that this production showed us scenes from the book that I hadn't seen in the other two versions before and another thing that I liked that makes it stand out to me from the other versions is that the main cast is or looks really young in the novel are schoolgirls and their bows are not that much older than they and yet in the other versions while the acting is really good it was very fresh to see young people portraying these characters not only because it's more faithful to the original version but because of the following Without spoiling anything, let's take for example the character of William Dobbin. His story takes on a whole different perspective if we see him as a man in his early 20s rather than as a man that looks to be in his early 30s. He's less world known, he's more vulnerable and susceptible to things and thus it gives him an air of innocence and foolishness and a naivety to his actions that's interesting to watch. I mean the other versions are pretty good too because they add more depth and seriousness to his beliefs and feelings but yeah this different approach was interesting to watch. But anyways Okay, so why am I saying that this version of Vanity Fair deserves less than 4 or 5 stars review if I'm only praising it so far? Because of two things. First, because the pace of it started off nicely, but the second half is just terrible. It's completely rushed, meaning that many plot lines lose their value and depth and importance because of this, because they are barely elaborated upon. I feel this really hurts the story, and it was as if they were spending a lot of time in the first half laying out the setting. In the second half, it's all just rushed through. The other thing that didn't really stand out to me was the portrayal of Becky Sharp, the protagonist. I had seen Olivia in other stuff before, and I think she has talent. And overall, I think she was a good Becky. She made me laugh at certain bits, but in the end, her portrayal was way too whitewashed. Becky is this amazing literary creation, and she demands a memorable performance, not just a good, okay portrayal. There's just so many layers to Becky. She's so cynical and heartless that while some maybe prefer this nicer version of her, I prefer her to be just as 
was ruthless as in the books. So far the only one that's come close to that, in my opinion, is Natasha Little, the one from the 1998 adaptation. She does a really good job of being ruthless, as evil and charming as the Becky in the books, though she does look older. So yeah, well maybe Becky was meaner here to a particular character than in other versions. In the end I feel that Olivia could have still gone deeper into the role, giving it a more darker approach. I first became aware of Vanity Fair back in 2004 when I saw the trailer for the adaptation that came out in that year. It started Reese Witherspoon. I was in my early teens back then and even back then I was already a big lover of period dramas and of England and because I love Reese Witherspoon from Legally Blonde I was really excited to be watching this. And yeah, I watched the movie and I loved it and then I discovered that there was a novel based on it and over the years it's become my ninth favorite book. I was instantly drawn by the author's writing style and because it added more depth to the plot that I already knew from the movie. And over the years, as I mature, I've grown to enjoy it even more because I'm realizing stuff that my early teenage mind didn't really grasp. Some of the reasons why I love this story so much is because it's a fascinating plot and it has an amazing strong protagonist whom I instantly like, even though she's an anti-hero. But yeah, as I was growing up, I discovered that there were other versions of Vanity Fair. And while I love old classic movies, I've only ever really seen the BBC adaptation from 1998 starring Natasha Little. If I liked the 2004 version, I absolutely love this series. This version of Becky Sharp, the protagonist, was way closer to the books and I enjoyed that while the 2004 version is really gorgeous to look at. This one focused on the nastier aspects of human beings, showing a lot of dirt and pigs and people burping for example. Plus, because it wasn't a movie but a TV series, it could expand more upon the plot. I have already reviewed these two versions as well as a novel and you can find the link to that video in the description box below. I want to say that one of the reasons why I also like Vanity Fair so much is because the plot is similar to my favorite Mexican soap opera, Ruby. For the moment though, I believe this is all I have to say about this version of Vanity Fair. Please let me know if you enjoyed it or not, as well as what are your own thoughts on this story. In the description box below, you can find a link to my review of the novel and the 2004 and 1998 adaptations, a link to the Goodreads page for the novel, as well as a link to the IMDb page for 2018 version. But yeah, anyways, thank you very much for watching my video. I'm Caro Herrera, the Mental Traveler, and I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. I'll be seeing you soon. Goodbye.